Hello everyone, this is Li Wei. Um, I'm the course in instructor for ENGR 458 Power Electronics. In today's lecture, I'm going to introduce uh, semiconductor switches for power converters. So semiconductor switches are the heart of power electronic converters. So semiconductor switches are the most important component for uh, power converters. Um, we may have um, different semiconductor switches depending on applications. Um, for example, we may have diode. So diode is a two-terminal device. Um, so it has a, for example, anode and cathode. So for this um, diode, it's a small diode. Uh, it's, um, the size is small, so um, probably it carries a small current, like a few amp when it is turned on, and when it is turned off, so this diode can probably block a small wattage, which is maybe tens of volt. So let's look at the second second kind of diode. So this diode is a, a larger power diode. So it's very often used for um, industrial applications. Um, so this diode, um, look at this and this. So this diode are much larger. It carries much more current, for example, a few hundred amp when it is conducting, and when it is blocking, it can block much higher wattage, for example, you know, uh, in kilowatt range. So um, so diode is not controlled control switch. So the diode, um, when you turn it on, you need apply a positive um, anode cathode wattage. And, and when you turn it off, um, you need to um, apply a negative um, anode cathode wattage to turn it off. So um, do we have um, controlled um, semiconductor switch? Yes, we have, for example, MOSFET. So MOSFET is a controlled um, semiconductor switch. So we control the turn on, turn off of MOSFET by applying gate to source wattage. So when we apply a um, positive um, gate to source wattage, so we, uh, we can turn on the MOSFET. So the MOSFET will be uh, conducting from the drain to the source. So if we have a load connected to the MOSFET between drain and source terminal, the load current will flow through the drain source when we apply a positive gate wattage. So when we apply a negative gate wattage or zero gate to source wattage, so we will turn off the MOSFET. So the, uh, the drain to source current will be cut off. So there will be no current flow through the drain and the source. So the first figure, so this one is a small MOSFET. So if we need a, a larger uh, MOSFET to conduct higher current and block higher wattage, so we may need a larger MOSFET. So the second, in the second figure, we can see here, it is a much larger uh, MOSFET. So we call it MOSFET module. So MOSFET module. So it's the packaging is a module package. So so here we may have two terminals. So one terminal is drain, one terminal is source, and here we have the gate drive circuit. The gate drive circuit will attach to the gate. By using the gate drive, so we can provide a positive wattage to turn on the MOSFET, and we apply zero wattage or probably negative wattage to turn off the MOSFET. So the, uh, the biggest advantage for MOSFET, it is, it is um, gate controlled uh, switch. So we can simply apply a gate wattage, um, positive gate wattage to turn it on and negative gate wattage to turn it off. So we don't need any gate current. So the gate power is very small. So we can use a very small gate power to control a powerful switch. So this is a big advantage. So we may have uh, another um, uh, power electronic switch, the so-called BJT. So bipolar junction transistor. So bipolar junction transistor is also a three terminal device. So it has an emitter, collector, and base. In order to, in order to turn on the uh, BJT, so we need to supply a positive base current so that we can make uh, the PN junction, like VBE PN junction forward biased, and then we can turn on the switch and when in order to uh, turn off the uh, the BGT, we need to apply a negative uh, base to uh, emitter wattage, 
for this NPN type um, BJT. So we make this um, PN junction reverse biased so that we can turn off the uh, the BJT. Or in other words, we, we need to supply a negative base current to turn off the BJT. So the BJT um, is not very often used for high power um, converters. The reason is because the turn on and turn off of BJT need a base current. So for example, if we have a BJT here, if we, the BJT carries a load current of 30 amp, for example, 30 amp. So in order to turn on the uh, BJT, we need a base current. So if the current gain is 30, so that means the base, the base current we need to turn on this BJT will be 1 amp. So 1 amp is actually a large current. So normally, um, so if we provide a 1 amp to the base, so we need a really a powerful base drive. It consumes power, much larger power compared with MOSFET gate drive. So it's not very convenient for high power application. So this is why for high power application, BJT is not widely used. Well, MOSFET is widely used. But there's one advantage for BJT. So BJT has uh, less uh, conduction, BJT has less uh, resistance, on-state resistance when it is conduct. So compare with MOSFET. So this is advantage of BJT. So, so um, we have another device, the so-called insulated gate bipolar transistors, IGBTs. Basically, IGBT is combined device of MOSFET and BJT. So IGBT has gate. It's a gate controlled switch. So IGBT has power terminals. So these power terminals, so these three terminals are connected together inside. So it's called collector. And these three terminals are collected inside. It's called emitter. So basically, by controlling the gate, we can turn on and turn off um, the, the switch. So if we provide a positive gate wattage, for example, 15 volt. So we can turn on the switch. So so the uh, the switch will be on. So the uh, uh, the collector emitter wattage will be very small. The switch is on. So if it's all almost like short circuit, it's just the ideal switch. So if we provide a negative gate wattage, the uh, the, the the resistance between VCE. So the resistance between VCE will be very large in micro ohm range. In micro ohm range. So the switch will be off. So advantage of IGBT, IGBT is, uh, is rather new technology. So the advantage of IGBT is it can controlled, can be controlled by gate. And uh, so we, on, we only need a gate wattage. We don't need a gate current to turn on, turn off of IGBT. So um, but when the IGBT turn on, turn, when IGBT turn on, the power losses is really low. It's really low compared with uh, MOSFET, given the same blocking wattage rating. So this this is why IGBT is very often used for high power applications. For example, in this figure, the IGBT is typical 3.3 kilovolt, 1.2 kiloamp device. So we will uh, also um, uh, mention IGBT later uh, in the uh, in the in the lecture. So let's see the another two uh, other two uh, semiconductor switches. So one is the so-called thyristor. So thyristor is like a diode. You see here the um, the outlook of thyristor is very similar to diode, but the thyristor is a three-terminal device. It has a anode and a cathode. So the two the two aluminum plate. One is anode, another one is cathode. And it has another terminal, which is the so-called gate. You see here, we have a gate, gate connection up to here. So by controlling the gate, by providing a gate current, or by, by pr providing a gate light pulse, sometimes it's, you know, for this example, it's a light, light trigger. By provide a light pulse to the gate, so we can turn on the, uh, the semiconductor. The semiconductor will, you know, will be turned on like ideal switch. So so this uh, thyristor cannot be turned off by the gate. So it can only be turned on by the gate. So this semiconductor is um, 
a, a, a big uh, has a big uh, wattage rating so here it is looks like 10 kilovolt 10 kiloamp semiconductor uh, 10 kiloamp thyristor is is uh, widely used for um, high power applications but the uh, disadvantage of thyristor here is um, it cannot be turned off by the gate so there is another type of uh, um, thyristor is the so called integrated gate commutative thyristor IGCT so this IGCT so this thyristor has a integrated gate so this gate is integrated with this thyristor so basically um, by providing a, a current pulse a positive current pulse we can turn on this uh, thyristor and by providing a negative current pulse to to the gate we can turn off this thyristor so this series this type of thyristor can be turned on and turned off by the gate so this is uh, this um, so this power switch is very useful for motor drives a lot of medium wattage um, motor drives use uh, the uh, the uh, IGCTs. So the IGCTs the advantage of IGCT is it has lower conduction losses compared with, for example, IGBT or MOSFET. So the disadvantage of IGCT is you see here the gate. The gate is very complicated, and the gate need high power compared with MOSFET or IGBT. So this is a disadvantage. So in the next slide, so we look at what is ideal switch. So when we analyze a paratonic circuit, so because we are we care about um, the circuit itself, so the first step for the semiconductors to analyze semiconductors, we assume the semiconductors are ideal, they're ideal switch. So for an ideal switch, um, we assume there's no limit on the amount of current that the device can carry when the device is in the on state. And also we assume there is no limit on the amount of the wattage that the device can block when the device is in off state. So that means when the device is turned on, it can carry any current, can carry very large current. There is no limit on how much current the device can carry. So when the device is blocked, when the device is turned off, it blocks a wattage. When it is blocked, because the device is, um, has infinite resistance, it is you know, open circuit, it blocks some wattage. When it is block wattage, as we assume it can block any wattage. So the device will not be broken down by high wattage. Also for ideal switch, we assume uh, the switch has zero on state resistance and wattage drop. So that means um, when the device is turned on, there is no conduction losses. But in reality, when the switch is turned on, we always have some small resistance for the for the switch so the switch does burn uh, losses so burn conduction losses but for ideal switch we ignore any conduction losses so when the switch for ideal switch when the switch is off we assume the switch has an infinite uh, turn off resistance so that means there is no uh, current uh, flow through the switch when the switch is in off state. So that means there's zero leakage current. But in reality, of course, this is not true. There are always a small leakage current flow through the switch because the off state resistance of the switch is not infinity. Also, we assume for ideal switch, the switch has um, instantaneous turn on and turn off uh, when we uh, change uh, the, when we change the state of the switch. So that means, so we have a paratonic switch. When I turn on and turn off the switch, the turn on and, and turn off are instantaneous. So we have zero rise up or fall, falling down time. Mm, so, so this indicate there is no switching losses for ideal switch. Of course, this is not true for practical case. So for practical switches, um, so uh, we have um, for the power handling capability it is limited that means when the switch is conducting a current so it has a limited you know conducting capability 
So when the switch is blocking, uh, when the switch is in blocking state or in off state, so because the switch will have um, infinite uh, resistance, it's block a wattage. So the blocking wattage capability is limited. If we apply a high blocking wattage, we may, you know, beyond the uh, the rating of the switch, we may broken down, we may break down the switch. So that means for practical switch, we have consider, you know, the blocking wattage that the switch can handle. Also, for practical switch, we have limited switching speed. So that means the turn on and turn off of the switch not is not instantaneous. So we do need some finite time to turn on and turn off the switch. So this limit the maximal operating frequency of the device. Also for practical switch, when the switch is turned on, the switch uh, carry uh, current and the switch has um, finite on state resistance. That means the switch will burn conduction losses. When the switch is in off state, the switch has finite off state resistance. Maybe it's very high, like in it, it can be mega ohm, but still it's a, the off state resistance is finite. So we may have a small leakage current flow through the switch. The bottom line here is um, because um, you know for practical switches so we have losses. So if we turn on the switch, because we have a small resistance for the switch, so we burn conduction losses. And uh, during the switching transient, because the uh, current wattage rise up and falling down uh, time are uh, you know finite. So we also have switching losses during uh, switching transition. So here, um, I want to show you um, the uh, the switching losses of practical switch. Um, so here we take a MOSFET as an example. So let's look at a, a simple MOSFET circuit. So I have a DC wattage source. I call it VDC. Here, so I have a um, a switch. I call it T, which is a semiconductor. It's a MOSFET switch. Also, I have a diode here. So here I have a load current IO. I assume the load current is constant, which which um, which is uh, normal. So in uh, practical applications, we may have inductors. Uh, the inductor current can be constant, you know, during a very short time. So here I use a current source to represent this uh, constant inductor current. So initially, um, the switch T, T is a MOSFET switch, the switch T is in off state. So the uh, load current flows through the diode. So it's freewheeling through the diode. The load current is IO. So the, the diode is conducting. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the switch, uh, the MOSFET switch T is blocking the wattage VDC. So the diode conducting, it has zero wattage, almost zero wattage drop. And the, the, the MOSFET, the MOSFET switch block, block DC wattage. So this is why you see here, so in the beginning, the MOSFET switch is off and the MOSFET wattage VT is equal to the DC link wattage VDC is blocking the DC link wattage and the diode wattage the diode wattage is zero so the, in the figure we uh, we don't have diode wattage uh, draw, uh, drawn so we only have the switch wattage also if you look at here so this is the switch current IT so IT is the switch current here IT so this is IT IT is the switch current so because the switch is in off state, IT is zero. So at some time instant here, so we we provide a positive gate wattage here, and uh, the switch will be turned on. So the switch will be turned on, but first we have some delay time, and uh, so we have TD on delay time. After this delay time, the switch will be turned on. The switch current which is IT, so this is IT. 
will will increase from zero to the load current. And when the switch current increase to uh, the load current, so the uh, the switch will start to turn on, and then it takes some time for the switch for the wattage to fall down. So this is the time is called a T F V, the the falling down time of the wattage takes some time to to fall down. So after the so after the the wattage goes to zero. So the switch is fully turned on, and the switch carries the load current. So you see here, so the switch turned on. So let's um, look back. So in the beginning, the diode is conducting the load current. And then I, when I turn on the switch, so the switch um, will be turned on, and the diode will see a reverse wattage. The diode will be blocking and uh, so gradually the, the, the switch current IT is increasing until it increases to the full load current. The, the switch, um, the, the MOSFET switch wattage will, will be reducing to zero and it's fully turned on. So this turn on, turn on and turn off takes time. So the current rise up is finite. So the so the switch wattage um, falling down also takes time. It's finite. It's not instantaneous. So if we calculate the uh, the um, the instantaneous power, which means so we have the switch wattage V T times the switch current I of T. So it's the instantaneous power is this much during switching transient. So if we integrate this instantaneous power P of T, so we can find out the switching energy. So this switching energy WC, C, WC on, so C is crossover time, cross, so C is called crossover. So the switching energy basically is equal to the area. So the here, so the length you know, here is Tc on the crossover time, the crossover of the wattage current, crossover time here is Tc on, and the height of the triangle here is Vd times Io. So the peak, the peak instantaneous power is Vd times Io. It's come from here. So the switching energy, which is the area of the triangle, is equal to half V D I O times T C, the crossover time for the on for the turn on. Okay, so we see here. So during turn on, so the switch will consume energy, which is this much. So this energy corresponding to the switching loss for turn on. Of course, similarly, for turn off of the switch, also we have the turn off energy. So here it is WC off, the turn off energy. So the turn off energy can be calculated by the uh, triangle area. So it depends on the, the wattage that we, we are blocking the DC link wattage and also the load current that we uh, that we conduct. So here VDC is uh, V is also VD, also VD in the figure. Okay, so we see here. So turn on and turn off of MOSFET is fine is finite. It's not the wattage current change is not instantaneous. So the wattage and current change is finite. So that means we have losses burned. Uh, for this by the switch. So these losses is the so-called switching losses or switching energy. Okay, so for the semiconductor switch, um, uh, we have we have seen different semiconductor switches and uh, the uh, the study of the uh, wattage, the current wattage 
um, characteristic of the switch is very important. For different switches, we will see different uh, IV characteristics. And uh, in order to select a, um, a appropriate uh, switch for our power converters, so we have to understand the uh, the application of our power converter, and we have to understand uh, the characteristic of characteristics of different power switches. So there are um, two kinds of two types of um, semiconductor switches. The first type is the so-called fully controlled uh, devices. So that means. So the turn on and turn off of the device um, is fully controlled. For example, MOSFET, uh, MOSFET semiconductor, it is fully controlled um, semiconductor. You can turn on and turn off of the semiconductor by applying gate wattage. Also, we have BGT. So BGT is uh, fully controlled. You can turn on, turn off um, the BGT by apply uh, a gate power, uh, a, a base current. Um, also, um, we have the so-called uh, insulated gate bipolar transistor. So this is uh, this uh, semiconductor device is controlled by by the gate like a MOSFET. So you can apply gate white wattage to turn on turn off uh, the semiconductor. There are some other another type of uh, semiconductor is not it is not fully controlled. Um, um, semiconductors. So, for example, power diode. So, uh, power diodes are um, important device devices for uh, modern applications at a low and medium power. So, the turn on and the turn off of the diode is by the branch wattage and branch current. So, if basically if we, we apply a positive uh, wattage to the diode, we turn it on, and uh, if we apply a negative um, uh, wattage to the diode. When the diode current goes to zero, reduced to zero, it will be off. So the another um, not fully controlled semi semiconductor switch is thyristor. So thyristor has a gate, as I mentioned before. So by uh, you know by uh, supply a gate pulse, a gate current pulse, we can turn on the thyristor, but we cannot turn off the thyristor unless. Uh, you know, we have uh, IGCT, which is uh, int integrated gate, um, integrated gate uh, commutated thyristor. We can use integrated gate to turn on or turn off uh, these uh, special thyristor. Okay, so let's first look at the power diode. So power diode, as I mentioned, the turn on and turn off is by um, positive or negative uh, anode wattage. So first, let's look at the circuit symbol for a diode. So we have a diode. diode. Uh, we have um, anode. Also, we have cathode. So plus minus. So we define the the wattage um, anode. To cathode wattage as the diode wattage, which is Vd, and we define the current flow through the anode to cathode. The current we define as Id. So, for diode, we have uh, three operating state. So we have forward bias or forward conducting state. For example, if I apply a positive uh, diode wattage. So the diode will be conducting a current, ID load current. So, so from here. So for the positive half plane of VD, so we have forward, forward bias, region. So if we apply positive, the uh, diode wattage VD, so the diode will be forward biased. So if we apply a negative. We apply a negative um, diode wattage, so the diode will be reverse blocked. So we, if we apply a negative uh, diode wattage uh, before the breakdown wattage, so here we have, if we have a breakdown wattage, so we apply a a smaller wattage than the breakdown wattage, so the diode will be uh, reverse biased. So the diode will carry zero current. 
so the current will be zero, so the diode will be turned off. And if we apply a larger um, reverse wattage, which is larger than the breakdown wattage, so if we apply a larger wattage, so the diode will be uh, broken down, that means the diode will be conducting again a negative current, so which so which is the so-called reverse breakdown. So we know uh, for polytonic converters, we don't uh, want to have reverse bro uh, re reverse uh, breakdown. So we don't use this mode. So we try to avoid it. So for example, so for um, for Zener diode, for Zener diode, we normally we use reverse breakdown, um, which is different from our application. So in power electronic converters, we don't use uh, reverse breakdown mode of the diode. So the diode is very popular device. The device rating is up to 6.0 kilovolt, which is quite high, and up to uh, 1.2 kiloamp is also a high current. So we have seen the uh, practical IV characteristic of the diode. So let's look at the ideal characteristic of the diode. So we, if we apply a positive diode wattage, the diode will be conducting and we assume the diode, when the diode is conducting, the wattage drop is zero and the diode can conduct any load current. So the diode current is, is defined by load. It can conduct any load current without any wattage drop. This is ideal. If we apply a negative uh, diode wattage, so the diode will be blocked. So there's no current conducting. The switch, diode is a switch, it turned off. Diode is off. There's no current uh, supplied. There's no current uh, conducting in the diode. So this is ideal characteristic of the diode. So let's look at um, um, the uh, another uh, important aspect of diode, the reverse recovery of the diode. So what is reverse recovery? So reverse recovery happens at, at the diode turn off. If I, I can give you an example, so I draw a simple circuit. So if I have a DC wattage, which is a DC link wattage, and then I have a, a switch, it can be a MOSFET switch, it can be controlled, and here I have a diode. So I have a load current source, I call it IO, it's load. So basically this circuit topology is the same as the one that we studied before. So here I have a, a MOSFET switch T, and here I have a diode. Initially we assume the diode uh, conduct a current. So the current can flow through the diode. I.O. So the current is freewheeling through the diode. Constant current I.O. So the conducting current here is I.O. when the diode is turned on. So now I want to turn off my switch. I want to turn off my, I want to, sorry, I want to turn on my switch. T. When the T switch is turned on, it closes so the diode will see a reverse wattage from the, uh, the DC source, VDC, and the diode will reduce its current from the load current IO to zero. And when it reduced to zero, it's not you know, just a stay zero, it will go to negative. It will go to negative and go to a negative here, reach to the peak negative current, and it will reduce back to to zero. So you see here from diode reaching to zero to diode current, you know, reach to the negative peak and come back to, to zero, it takes some time. This is so called the, 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 the duration is so called reverse recovery time. And the peak current here is called diode diode reverse recovery current. So 
the reason this phenomenon happens is because inside the diode, inside the diode, we have a small parasitic capacitor connected inside the diode. So when when current flows through the diode, so the load current will charge up the small parasitic capacitor. So when we turn off, when we turn off this diode, we have to discharge. We have to discharge this small parasitic capacitor. So that is why we see a reverse current flow through flow through the uh, negative flow through the negative terminal and to the positive terminal. This is because of the discharge of the parasitic capacitor. And uh, so the, um, the, uh, the integration of current with time give us the charge. So this charge is the so-called reverse recovery charge. And this charge actually is the charge stored in this parasitic capacitor. So when we discharge this parasitic capacitor, so this is anode and cathode. So we will after it's fully discharged, the diode current will be zero again. So that means so the diode current when it is turned off, it can experience a, a negative peak current. So if you look at this diode, so when this diode, you know, in the beginning it conduct a positive current, and then this positive current, when they turn off the diode, will become zero and become reverse, become flowing from, um, you know, negative terminal to the positive terminal because it's reversed. So we have reverse recovery current flow, and also we have the load current, which is I O. So the reverse recovery current add up to the load current, give us the MOSFET current at the switching transition. So this MOSFET current actually is quite large. It is IRR plus IO. So it's, if IRR is equal to IO, so the MOSFET current will be two times of IO during the switching transition at this time during the switching transition. So that means the MOSFET switch we'll see a overshoot, we'll see a current overshoot. The MOSFET current, for example, in the beginning it is zero. When the MOSFET is turned on, it will have overshoot until it comes back to I.O. So this overshoot is about two I.O. So this is bad, this is bad. Um, so this is bad for, for the, uh, for the uh, MOSFET. So this overshoot is due to the diode reverse uh, recovery current, and we try to minimize um, try to minimize this reverse recovery current when we uh, design the circuit. So um, also um, due to the reverse recovery of the diode current, we also we have reverse recovery loss. So this uh, you see here, so the current is not does not go to zero uh, instantaneously. We have negative current it generate reverse recovery loss. So we try to also to minimize this reverse recovery loss. So uh, let's look at another power semiconductor uh, device, uh, MOSFET. So MOSFET is turned on or turned off by gate wattage. So that means if we supply a positive gate to source wattage VGS, we can turn on uh, the MOSFET. If we supply a zero or negative gate to source wattage, we can block uh, the MOSFET. So MOSFET is the most popular device uh, in low to medium power applications. So typically for, for a, a MOSFET, it is, re it is rated up to 1.5 kilowatt, 600 amp, although the maximum wattage rating and maximum current rating are not reached uh, simultaneously. So the MOSFET normally um, uh, has a uh, switching frequency of in, megahertz, in megahertz range. The switching transition time of MOSFET is very short. So typically at several um, tens of uh, nanosecond to hundreds of uh, nanosecond. So first, uh, let's look at um, the circuit symbol for a MOSFET. So the circuit symbol for MOSFET is like this. So we have the gate, 
and the gate is insulated. Uh, gate is insulated from uh, the, uh, the semiconductor. So for the semiconductor, so we have uh, here we have uh, the uh, the source. We have the source terminal, and we have the the body terminal, and we have the the drain terminal. So here, so we have the drain. terminal so here we have the source terminal and here we have here the body so the body normally connected to the source and if this is a n-channel MOSFET so the body is a p-type semiconductor and the p-n junction is from the body to um, Towards the gate, so um, so this is circuit symbol for MOSFET. So we have here it is gate. So here we have drain, and here we have source. So normally body we don't write uh, the uh, we don't write uh, for the body. So here for MOSFET also. We have a parasitic, parasitic in a parasitic diode between the source and the drain. So this is the so-called body diode. So body diode. So the body diode exists because of a parasitic pin junction between source and drain inside uh, the MOSFET. So this body diode uh, will conduct reverse. Current. So when we have a reverse current flow through the MOSFET, it will flow through the body diode. So let's define the circuit symbol here. So we have the drain to uh, source wattage, which is normally called VDS. And we have drain current, ID. And we have gate to source wattage, plus minus the gate to source wattage. So this is the circuit symbol. So we will look at uh, the body diode later at the next, uh, at the next slide. Um, so what is the uh, what is the so VI characteristic of um, the uh, MOSFET? For the MOSFET, um, we have three operating mode. So depending on the gate uh, wattage. So if we apply a zero gate wattage, the MOSFET will be in the cutoff mode. So there's no current. Even we apply a drain to source wattage, there is no current flow through the MOSFET. So this is the so-called cutoff mode. So if I provide some gate wattage, for example, here if I provide five volt, maybe eight volt, so ten volt. So when I provide gate positive gate wattage. And when I apply a VDS, a drain source wattage, the MOSFET will be turned on. The MOSFET will conduct current. So the higher the higher uh, gate wattage that I provide, the larger um, uh, current the MOSFET will conduct. So in this in this region, in this region, so so in this region is the so-called Trial the mode. Trial the mode in this region. So in this region is the so-called saturation mode. Normally, uh, for um, power electronics, we use the MOSFET in trial the mode and cutoff mode. That means, um, so we. Uh, when we uh, turn on the MOSFET, the MOSFET will be turned on. It will conduct some load current, depending on you know how much load current we have. It will be turned on the MOSFET, and when the MOSFET is turned on, the uh, the the VDS wattage is very small. For example, if I have load current here I O, so the the VDS wattage is very small. So I have a small wattage drop 
across uh, the device across the MOSFET, I have a small conduction loss. So basically here you see uh, the linear line here, this is MOSFET resistance when it is turned on. So when I apply a negative, or oh, sorry, a zero gate wattage, the MOSFET will be off. So if we look at the ideal, the ideal circuit characteristic, the ideal device characteristic, I have VDS, the drain to source wattage, and I have the, the drain current flow through the device. When I apply a positive, uh, sorry, a zero gate wattage, gate to source wattage, the MOSFET will be in cutoff mode. There's no current con uh, conducting. If I apply a uh, positive gate to source wattage, the MOSFET will be conducting, it's conducting a load current, depending on how much the load current. So for example, I, have, I may have a load current here, IO, it will be here. So the load current can conduct. So if the load current is positive, it flows from D to S. The load current is positive. So it will be here in this region. If the load current is negative, that means it flows from S to D. It flows through the body diode, for example. If the MOSFET is off, it flows through the body diode. So the current is negative, it flows through the body diode. If, if the MOSFET is turned on, well, we have a negative current, the, the current can flow through both through the channel, through the end channel and through the body diode. So this negative can flow, so this negative current can flow both through the body diode and end channel of the MOSFET. So this is uh, this shows the MOSFET is bi-directional conducting switch where it can block the wattage at one side. It can block a positive wattage. It cannot block a negative wattage. If I apply a wattage from a source to drain, it will turn on the body diode. I cannot block any reverse wattage. So uh, we mentioned uh, for MOSFET we have a body diode integrated. So this body diode is uh, um, uh, come from a parasitic pin junction. Inside the MOSFET. So this parasitic pin junction uh, is equivalent to the body diode and if I have a negative current, so this negative current can flow through the body diode. If if the uh, the gate is off, if if the MOSFET if the MOSFET the MOSFET itself doesn't conduct any current, the current can still flow through the body diode. So the body diode can uh, conduct the reverse current. So the MOSFET can only block forward wattage. If I provide a forward wattage plus minus wattage, for example, VDC, if I turn off the gate, if I have a, a zero gate wattage or negative gate wattage, so there's no current that flows through the device and I can block the DC link wattage. But it cannot block any wattage from reverse direction. That means if I apply a wattage plus minus VDC from reverse direction, so there will be current flow through the body diode. Even the uh, MOSFET, is, MOS, even the MOSFET gate, is has zero wattage. The current can still flow through the body diode. So this is very important to know. Okay, so the operation operating region operation regions of uh, power MOSFET. So the wattage VGS, the wattage VGS, is the gate to source wattage, as we mentioned. So this wattage, VGS, controls the turn on and turn off of the MOSFET. So VTH is the so-called threshold wattage of, of the device. If, if the, uh, the gate wattage is larger than the threshold wattage, the MOSFET, can, the MOSFET will start conducting 
a small current. So this uh, VTH, threshold wattage, is typically 0 0.7 volt. So when the gate wattage is larger than the threshold wattage, the MOSFET will be on. And uh, if the gate wattage VGS is sufficiently large, so the VDS will be small. So the gate to source wattage or the gate wattage uh, normally should be between 5 to 12 volt to fully turn on the MOSFET. A small gate wattage is not very good because the MOSFET will not be fully turned on and uh, the load current may drive the MOSFET into uh, saturation mode. That means you know, we'll burn uh, much higher losses because we have much higher wattage drop. So if the gate wattage is less than the threshold wattage, the MOSFET will be off and the drain to the drain current almost equal to zero because the MOSFET is off and uh, the resistance will be infinity and MOSFET uh, doesn't conduct any current. So under both regions of operation, the gate current is almost zero because the MOSFET, so the MOSFET has insulated gate. If you look at the circuit symbol here, you see here the gate is insulated from the, uh, from the semiconductor, from, from uh, the uh, drain and the source. So there is no gate current in steady state. MOSFET is a watch-driven device, so therefore, the gate um, is uh, the gate control is simple, and uh, we don't need gate current, and the gate power uh, is small. But we we do need um, a, a gate current during the turn on and turn off transitions, uh, because we we do need to discharge a gate a gate to source capacitor we need to charge and discharge this gate to source capacitor to turn it on and turn it off to make the gate wattage uh, either uh, you know positive wattage or zero we need to turn on we need to charge and discharge the gate to source wattage we need some change in the gate current but not steady state so this is okay so the gate power is still small so first uh, in order to understand the operation of MOSFET, let's look at uh, you know the semicondu semiconductor basic from ENGR351, uh, which is microelectronic that I taught uh, last year. So let's see why MOSFET um, can conduct uh, current when, when we apply a gate wattage. So here, what happens if source and drain are grounded? You see here, source and drain they are grounded. And uh, if we apply a positive gate wattage, we apply a positive gate wattage. So if you look at the figure here, when we apply a positive gate wattage, so when VGS is applied to the gate terminal, so it will uh, cause a build, build up of positive charge. Basically, positive charge will accumulate along the metal electrode. So this build up causes the free holes, which is positive charge carriers, to be repelled from the region of p-type. So p-type substrate. We have p-type body. So the positive charge will be repelled from the p-type body down under the gate. This um, migration, this migration results in the uncovering of uh, negative bond charges. You see here we have negative bond charges. So this is because the, the holes or the positive, positive charges are repelled down and we have, un, we have uncovering of uh, negative bond charges. So the, the positive gate wattage also attract Electrons, so we have negative charges. So the the positive the positive gate wattage will attract electrons from the uh, the uh, n-type semiconductors. So the n-type semiconductor will supply electrons beneath the gate because these electrons are uh, attracted by the positive charges at the gate, and then we formulate 
a n channel here. So we formulate. So once a sufficient number of these electrons accumulate, an n region is created. So here you see here. So we create an n region here, a negative charge region. So connecting the source and the drain. So you can imagine once a sufficient of these electrons accumulate, an N, N region is N region is created, which is full of uh, electrons. So if I connect the source and the drain, if I connect the drain with a wattage source, for example, the drain source wattage. So the source is still grounded. If I pr provide a drain source wattage VDS, so you can imagine a current will flow through, current will flow through the drain to the source. So this is why when we apply a positive gate wattage, so the switch will be turned on and we will have current flow through the switch. So let's look at the on-state resistance of power MOSFET. MOSFET have on-state resistance, RDS, that causes uh, power dissipation in the device, which is known as conduction loss. So when MOSFET is turned on, we do have some small turn-on resistance, RDS. So when the current flows through the device, it will burn losses. The losses is the so-called conduction state losses conduction losses, so peak conduction. Peak conduction is equal to the current uh, flow through uh, the uh, drain source, the current RMS value square times the, uh, the resistance of the MOSFET. It has a unit of watt. So the higher uh, current, the higher losses burn. And also for the higher resistance, the higher losses burn. So for, uh, for MOSFET, we really hope we can have a low resistance MOSFET to reduce the conduction losses. The on-state losses, the on-state resistance, RDS, increases rapidly with the device blocking what is reading. So if the, the switch, the MOSFET switch block higher uh, wattage when it is turned off. So the on-state resistance will be larger, will be larger. So it's, we can imagine like this. So if we want to block, uh, you know, higher wattages, we need many um, MOSFET switches in series. The more switches in series, the higher on-state resistance we may have. So the so higher RDS we may, we may have. Um, so, if we uh, if we look at the MOSFET resistance RDS, so given per unit cheap area, so given the per unit cheap area, so the on state the on state resistance is a function of blocking wattage reading. So V block is you know how much wattage uh, the MOSFET can block when it is in off state. So the uh, the resistance basically is equal to K, which is a constant times we block the blocking wattage raised to the power of 2.5 to 2.7. So the higher blocking wattage, I mean the uh, the much the higher um, the on on state resistance, and the on state resistance actually uh, is increasing as a quadratic function. So it's in it's increasing very quickly when the blocking wattage is uh, increased. So which is really uh, very, very bad for high uh, wattage applications um, for MOSFET because for high uh, wattage applications we need block high wattage and so we need a MOSFET uh, with a high, much higher resistance which is uh, very bad for uh, in terms of conduction loss. So this is why MOSFET is normally not used for high power applications. So for for high wattage applications, when the wattage is higher than, say, 1.2 kilowatt, 
So normally we don't use MOSFET anymore because the resistance of the MOSFET will be too high for us to use. Let's look at another semiconductor switch, which is uh, bipolar uh, junction transistors, BGTs. So the uh, turn on and turn off of BGT is by base current. So we, we know that we need to supply a base current to turn it on, and we need to supply a negative base current to turn off the BGT, which is not very convenient as MOSFET. For MOSFET, we only need a gate wattage, and we don't need any gate current. And uh, for MOSFET, we have very small uh, gate drive circuit, very small. We need very small power for MOSFET to turn on, turn off the device. But for the BGT, we need a uh, high power for the base circuit to turn on, turn off uh, the BGT. So BGT uh, is not commonly used for uh, switching power applications. So BGT um, you know, has been replaced by power MOSFET and the IGBTs. IGBT here is insulated gate bipolar transistors. So, uh, so we'll discuss uh, IGBTs in the next slide. So the reason is just because uh, the uh, bipolar junction transistor is not easily controlled by the base. We need the base current. So for the BGT, so typical rating is up to um, you know uh, 1.2 kilowatt and 500 amp. So the uh, advantage of BGT is for the same blocking wattage rating, the BGT has smaller on-state resistance compared with MOSFET. So this is uh, a good, uh, I mean, very very important advantage compared with MOSFET. The turn-on resistance is smaller. So let's look at first the circuit symbol for BGT. So BGT is a three-terminal device. It has three terminals. So it has collector, emitter, and base. So here we call it C, we call it B, and we call it E. And the current flow direction, if this is a NPN type uh, BGT, the current flows through collector to emitter. So the current defined as IC, collector current, and uh, the wattage defined as VCE, we collect uh, the collector emitter wattage. So for the, uh, for the BGT, the IV characteristic is given in the, in the figure. So if we have a zero base current, the BGT will be off if no matter how much the, um, the, the VCE wattage that I apply to the collector and the emitter, there's no, uh, there is no collector current. So the BGT is in cutoff mode. Cutoff. Mode. When I apply some base current, for example, 0 0.5 amp, 1 amp, maybe 1.5 amp. So when I provide a positive base current, BGT will start to conduct current depending on the, a, uh, the VCE wattage. The higher base current, the higher collector current. BGT has three um, operating region. So the first operating region, so this region is the so-called saturation region. So this region is the so-called active region. So normally um, for power electronic switch, for power electronic application, we use BGT in cutoff region or cutoff mode and the saturation region. So we provide a, a base current which is high enough, which is high enough, so that given a load current, if I have load current here, IO, so the, uh, the uh, 
the semiconductor will st still stay in saturation region and uh, the the wattage drop across collector emitter will be a small wattage drop which is VCE corresponding to load the load current IO for the ideal IV characteristic VCE if the base current is zero so the uh, so here is IC. If the base current is zero, the BGT will be turned off, no matter how how, how large uh, the uh, VC wattage that I apply. So the current will be zero. So this is in off mode. If I provide, if I supply a positive large gate current, BGT will be turned on. When BGT turned on, it carries load current. For example, the load if the load current is I/O, it carries I/O current here, and uh, I assume for ideal uh, ideal switch, I assume the wattage drop uh, of the switch during turn on is zero. So you see here the wattage drop is zero. So so this is when it is turned on. This is ideal switching characteristic. So for uh, BJT, it can block reverse wattage. So if I apply a reverse wattage here, plus minus. Uh, reverse wattage so there's no current flows through the BGT it can block a reverse wattage so therefore if we want to use BGT as a bi-directional conducting switch we do need to add an external diode it's called a free wheeling diode for example we do need add a external diode because there's no body diode like MOSFET we do need to add this external diode so that we have reverse conducting capability of, of the uh, BGT. Okay, so let's look at the last, uh, not the last, but the second to the last of the semiconductor switch, which is uh, insulated gate bipolar transistor. Basically, uh, what is uh, IGBT? IGBT is a compound device of MOSFET plus BGT. So, if you look at here, I have a circuit, a IBD circuit. Basically, it is the so-called Darlington uh, connection of um, I, of uh, MOSFET and uh, BGT, or cascaded connection of MOSFET and the BGT. Basically, so I have a MOSFET, I have a BGT. So the MOSFET drain and the source is connected to the base, and uh, uh, so this is a PNP type PN. PNP type uh, BJT. So this uh, this space is connected to the uh, collector of this PNP type uh, BJT. So why do we need IGBT? We have to uh, look at the advantage and the disadvantage of MOSFET and BJT. For the uh, MOSFET, the advantage of MOSFET is that it is easy to turn on and turn off by gate wattage. There is no need to have gate current in steady state. So the gate power, the gate drive power is small. So this is the advantage. Well, if we look at the MOSFET, the disadvantage of MOSFET is for high power or high wattage, the resistance, the unsteady resistance is too high compared with uh, BJT. So if we look at the BJT, so what is the advantage? So advantage of BJT is so that for high wattage application, the turn on losses is low compared with MOSFET. So the BJT on state resistance is smaller compared with MOSFET. But the disadvantage of um, BJT is we need a base current, a high base current to turn on and turn off the BJT, which is not very convenient. So if we combine the two semiconductors, we create a, a optimal solution, uh, you know, of, um, to have easy control of the gate, building the gate, and to have a low uh, turn on uh, resistance 
uh, when we turn the, uh, the the semiconductor turn the BGT on. So this is very popular. This is why BG, IGBT is very popular for high power application. So normally, off uh, MOSFET is used, uh, you know, typically up to six six hundred volt, and well, IGBT uh, are uh, you know used typically higher. You know, for the when the wattage rating is higher than six hundred volt, we use IGBT. So IGBT has um, a switching typical switching frequency up to twenty kilohertz, and uh, the device uh, blocking wattage rating maximal can be six point five kilovolt, and the current conducting uh, rating uh, can be one point two kiloamp. So the uh, the uh, if you look at the MOSFET, uh, sorry, the, the IGBT, the IGBT is turned on by applying the gate wattage. So if I apply a gate to source wattage, VGS, so I can turn on first my MOSFET. So here, so the drain source will be turned on, and the base here will be connecting to to the, to the, uh, a, uh, to this uh, E terminal, which is the uh, emitter terminal. So that means, so these PN junctions, we have a PN junction here. This is NPN type semiconductor. So this PN junction will be forward biased because so for the collector terminal of the IGBT normally is connecting to a positive wattage for the emitter terminal of the IGBT, normally it's connecting to a neg negative wattage. So now you see here this PN junction because the base and uh, the uh, the emitter is connecting together. So this PN junction is forward biased. So this that means this N this PNP type uh, BGT will be forward biased. It will be conducting current. So you see here. So when we apply gate wattage, they can uh, make the uh, BGT conducting a current. So that means we, you know, we uh, have a easier uh, driving circuit for the, uh, for the uh, BGT. So the uh, advantage of IGBT here, so we need only a small gate power to control a powerful switch. Here, one example of the switch here. So for example, we have a, a, a IGBT switch. It can block 3.3 .3 kilowatt wattage. And it, well, it's, when it's conducting, it can conduct 1.2 kiloamp. We only need a small gate circuit to control the switch. The power is typically only 3 watt. So this is really good. So when the uh, IGBT is conducting, actually, so this is the, uh, the BGT is conducting. Because the BGT has much smaller resistance, on-state resistance, compared with MOSFET. So IGBT will have smaller on state resistance compared with MOSFET given the same wattage rating. So this is why we prefer IGBT for high wattage applications. So let's look at the last semiconductor switch, which is uh, Syristor. Syristor is also uh, called silicon controlled rectifier. So this is why, this is because in the beginning, uh, Syristor is normally used for rectifier application, and in the beginning, Syristor is made of uh, silicon. Uh, made of uh, silicon, so we call it a silicon controlled rectifier. So, uh, Syristor can carry a forward current. So first, let's look at a the Syristor here. So we have the symbol for Syristor is like a diode, but so we have a gate to control the turn on of the Syristor. So when we, when we provide a positive gate pulse, if we have a IG is positive, IG is a current, uh, the gate current. If I provide a positive uh, current pulse, I don't need a continuous current, I just need a pulse current. So I can turn on, I can turn on my uh, Syristor assuming that I have already applied a positive bias wattage, which is the so-called VAK. But I cannot turn off my Syristor by the gate. 
Suppose if I apply a negative gate current, I cannot turn off the thyristor. So how do I turn off this thyristor? In order to turn off the thyristor, I have to apply a negative uh, wattage VAK to the thyristor. It's a negative wattage so that the current IA will be decreasing when the current decreases to zero the uh, the, the uh, thyristor will be turned off so we see here so the turn on is controlled by the gate and the turn off of the thyristor is controlled by the circuit by the circuit wattage and current so which is not very convenient um, for uh, for uh, for the paratonic application but because uh, thyristor is uh, you know the uh, construction or manufacture of uh, the semiconductor uh, the uh, thyristor is very easy so this is uh, the thyristor is was invented uh, early in uh, 1970s and uh, it was very widely used until 1980s and uh, later on gradually because the semiconductor switch is not fully controlled gradually um, thyristor is replaced by uh, modern uh, semiconductor switches like MOSFET, IGBTs. So now, thyristors are mainly used for um, high power um, power ut utility applications. For example, thyristors are still widely used in high wattage direct current transmissions because the thyristors has thyristors have very high wattage and current ratings, you know, which uh, MOSFET and IGBT cannot come up with. And the thyristor, when turned on, has a uh, much smaller on-state resistance compared with IGBT. So the ideal uh, characteristic of the thyristor is like this. So here we have the anode cathode wattage, and we have the uh, the current IA, the anode current, flow through the thyristor. So when we apply a anode cathode wattage but we don't apply any gate pulse current the thyristor will be off when we apply when we uh, provide a positive uh, anode cathode wattage and we provide a pulse a gate pulse we can turn on the thyristor when the thyristor is turned on it's an ideal switch and uh, it carries the load current if i apply a reverse if I apply a reverse thyristor wattage, if I carry, if I apply a reverse VAK wattage, or the VAK wattage is negative, the thyristor will be off. If initially the thyristor carry a load current, the load current will be decreasing until to, until it come to zero, and the thyristor will be off. So this, so this is the ideal uh, IV characteristic of the thyristor. Okay, so this is uh, this section. If you have any question, please uh, let me know. Um, yeah, I, I will uh, answer uh, your question. Thank you. Bye-bye.